Masai Ujiri's organization is an NBA third best 11-2 since March 9th, with attacking players who can drop buckets from any area of the floor. The trade steal of a lifetime and 18 point per game score in Gary Trent Jr. can win the Raps playoff games with his perimeter shot creation. OG, Scotty plus Spicy are three versatile two-way wings with an overwhelming combination of playmaking and shooting chops for their size, all while some precious upside has evolved from the Raptors' center spot. Despite Fred Van Vliet fighting through lingering knee soreness, here's how the Raps are still dominating the NBA, and it's not even close. Right before that, 90.4% of you watching right now aren't subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DFlowHoops, and I'll give you a follow back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. He's not only the Rookie of the Year favorite, but Scotty Barnes may be the best rookie defender in NBA history. Scotty's combination of lateral quickness, timing, IQ, and reach with his ridiculous 7'3 wingspan, allows him to make flawless rotations. Whether it's pressing up in one-on-one -on -one scenarios, then reaching in to swipe some cookies, or rotating over to the weak side for block shots, Scotty's defense isn't only elite, it's elusive, which often makes attacking players look silly. In just his first season, Barnes already ranks number 6 at his position in defensive rating, averaging over a steal and just under a block per game. But those numbers don't come close to justifying the type of impact the 20-year-olds legitimately had for Toronto's defense. If you haven't heard, Barnes became the first rookie since Magic Johnson in 1980 to play all five positions this season, and that versatility helps him out offensively. Barnes has an extremely polished postgame, with an array of moves ranging from drop hooks to drop steps, along with smooth post fadeaways when he's cooking. You almost never see rookies enter the league and play bully ball, but Scotty's stature and footwork allow him to dominate like a five-year pro. While the kid's long strides in the open court and ability to go downhill off the dribble resemble a less developed Giannis, the mix of Scotty's postgame, passing lane awareness, and speed in the open court as well gives me flashbacks of LeBron James in his rookie year. Scotty's offensive versatility is astounding, as one possession he can set a screen acting as the big man in a pick and roll, and the next he can pull up for a three off the dribble. Barnes has been a massive factor to Toronto holding the best record in the Eastern Conference over their past 13 games. The Raptors are peaking at just the right time. To be fair, they needed OT to beat the Celtics who were missing Tatum, Brown, Horford, and Williams. Give credit to Boston's depth with players that can shock you like Marcus Smart, Derek White, Grant Williams, and Peyton Pritchard. The reason I bring up that win against the Celtics is because it was only one of three Raptor wins out of their 11 in March that hasn't come by double digits. The cohesion and trust within Toronto's offensive system has been a big reason for their dominance. In a blowout win over the breakout Timberwolves, all of the Raptors' 18 threes were assisted on an incredible stat. But whether it's Ananobi, All-NBA Siakam, Gary Trent Jr., Thaddeus Young Legs, or even Precious Achua, the Raps have a ton of options to turn to. Having said that, with five games left on the schedule, Toronto wouldn't be close to fighting for home court advantage if it wasn't for their first-time All-Star in 2022, the Rockford, Illinois-born Fred Van Vliet. Whether it's his peskiness, speed off the dribble, or quick, naturally gifted shooting release, FVV has cemented himself as a top 10 point guard in the association at the very least. You hear superstars in post-game interviews talk about Toronto's defense throwing the box and one at them, but the reason that method works so perfectly is because of Van Vliet's relentless activity and blisteringly fast, championship-winning defensive rotations. With the return of Raptor Goat Lowry looming in the next few days, given he left the franchise in good hands after mentoring Steady Freddy, that just elevates Kyle's legend status in Toronto even further. While Van Vliet recently credited Steph Curry for changing the game with his three-point shot and carving a path for the type of player that he is, strictly in terms of hustle, that aspect of Fred's game was heavily influenced from what he watched from playing behind and next to the NBA's league leader in charges drawn for many years now and an elite floor general in Kyle Lowry. Coach Nurse broke down Van Vliet's 12.8 assists and 5 steal effort against Minnesota, saying, I thought that was as fast as Fred's moved in a few games, and his hands were unbelievable tonight. It seemed like there was a stretch where he was going and pulling it out there time and time again. Yeah, he was incredible defensively tonight. But with Van Vliet inspirationally fighting through a bad knee, in which he'll have surgery on this offseason, 
another one of Masai's draft steals from way back in 2016 has stepped up. Over his last 11 games, Pascal Siakam is averaging 27.2 points, 8 rebounds, and 5.3 assists on 54.3% shooting from the fields and 46.5% from three-point range. Spicy has four 30-point games during that stretch, including a season-best 40 points and an overtime W against Boston to open the week. Pascal is one of seven players in the NBA averaging 20 points, eight boards, and eight dimes. Luka, Giannis, Jokic, Harden, and LeBron are the only others. Siakam's recent play has helped vamp the Raptors' 2021-22 record to 45-32. I thought Pascal Siakam broke down the Raptors' mix of attacking players best, responding with this in an interview after his team's blowout win over Minnesota. Um, you know, sometimes it's going to be, you know, Gary and OG scoring, and, and sometimes it's going to be me or Scotty or somebody else. So. Toronto's trade deadline acquisition of a veteran journeyman stretch big, the product of Georgia Tech and Thaddeus Young, continues to pay dividends as the 33-year-old clearly has a lot of game left in the tank, despite the mileage he's built up over his 15-year pro career. Against one of his former teams on Wednesday, Thad threw down a poster that made him look 10 years younger, to which Coach Nurse reacted to post-game with this. Quote, they were calling him Thad Young Legs. Overall for Serrano, it's evident they're well-equipped 1 through 10, with the bench additions of Thad Young and Armani Brooks to do some damage in the postseason. It all starts with how Siakam performs, who just dropped his second career triple-double and has been playing the most consistent ball of his career, which is perfect because the playoffs are right around the corner. Siakam's methods of demolition have been diverse all year. We've seen this week alone that he can swing a game with his individual scoring punch or with his wildly improved playmaking. If the guys around him hit shots and stir up mayhem the way they did against the Wolves, one of the Eastern Conference's top seeds is going to have some problems come mid-April. What's Toronto's 2022 ceiling in your opinion? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise this summer, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Irvin Alexar Guerra, who says the Mavs can win the championship this year as they have a legitimate chance of having the Hawks 2021 playoff run. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.